I get myself into a place where I feel guilty if I go, like you said, partying, it's my weight, my faith, like all these things go on in my head and I look at other people who are hung over and I'm like, I wish I could just be hung over. Thing is when I go out, it's it's not just go out for a few, like two or three drinks, it's go out and don't stop until two or three days time. That's kind of where my problem starts creeping up on me from and it's either like all in or all out and that's something that I need to work on and something that I'm constantly battling against, but it's not a battle. It's just something that um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be a good, try and be a good person. And sometimes it gets to me. <laughs> I'm interested just but by that because, because you are, you are a good person. I think most successful people are racked with those, those demons. If you didn't have the voice that said after you've been on the piss or you have missed a training session or you've forgotten your boots that, that wasn't right and that wasn't professional. You wouldn't be as successful as you are. I never, for the long part of my career, you knew that, you know, even before you started drinking, I, I would hardly go out a lot of the times because I'd be wrapped by guilt. You know, if I went out, I'd have to train the next day. You know, I was never satisfied. And I think it's interesting you say about your, you know, not when you get complacent, but, but, but sometimes that, that knife edge of feeling invincible is what makes you one of the best players in the world. If you looked at doing some psychology stuff as well, I know you use faith as a tool, but speaking to psychologists and harnessing that, because it's a fine line between success and failure that, and you don't want to eradicate the feeling of, of being you know, invincible. It's something that um, I certainly looked into when I was younger, whereas now, um, I think for me, what makes it easier is, is kind of putting it out there and, and talking about it rather than whether it's the media or whether it's my wife or my parents, you know, it's, I'm pretty open book. And when I feel like that, it makes me a better player. The danger is just like carrying it on. I need to know where to, where the line is uh, in terms of where my head's at, in terms of say, say for example, we won the double and here I am thinking I'm the man, which I wasn't. And then that influenced things off the field uh, in the World Cup camp and other things that led to uh, other players being affected negatively. And, and that's something that I'm, I shouldn't have done and something that, like I said, I reflected on and, and talked to those people. And, and that's where I think it's not a good thing. We were talking last week with Eddie actually about the, um, about the last dance. And he actually said that Rodman was Marla. But I just sort of wonder in many ways whether, you know, you are who you are and uh, more with a Saracens hat on really, how, what Saris have done to enable you to maximise your potential, but to also keep you on track isn't necessarily the right expression, but to keep you within their framework. Do you know what I mean? Oh, Saris is an environment where, um, oh, it's similar to England. I feel just as comfortable in England. The only difference with England and Saris is there's other players from different clubs that aren't used to it. And that was my problem was that I went in with the same feeling towards everyone else. And that's kind of what I wanted to do was break down barriers with other players from other teams. And I wanted other players to to have that vulnerability where we can then grow. And people were only willing to go a certain few steps, whereas I was ready to go all in. And that's kind of, of where it kind of started from, yeah. 